beginnings of a royal family. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verses 4 through 14. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought you up, the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders or any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince, ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from your, all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me, when... He commits iniquity, I will punish him with the rod, such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. We're moved along in our story. The land, the land of Israel, the land of Canaan, has been semi-conquered. And after a period of political ambiguity with judges, trying their best to be military leaders, we have come to the second ruler of the land of Israel, King David. And King David is loved by God. We're never given a reason why. You can look the scriptures through the testimonies, and there is nothing that says why God really loved him. What reason? Because David certainly did horrid things as we read in the testimony of Samuel, testimony of Kings. It's a bit more cleaned up in Chronicles, but still, David was still a human being, not a super human being. And David is asking why the Ark of the Covenant's in a tent while he's in a palace. And this is the response that God gives, that it's the Davidic covenant. It's the promise that God now makes to David in a similar manner to what God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Except instead of making a house, David will not be allowed to make a house. He, it's later said he's a man of blood and God desires one of his sons, Solomon, to be the person deputized to build the temple. Now, David collects the things to, for it to be built, but it's later built by Solomon. And here, God declares that he will make David a house. He will make the David dynasty happen, and that it will rule forever. And they shall be called sons of God. We think of that more of a, a divine title, but certainly one who is close to God. And unlike God's arrangement with King Saul, the previous king of Israel, this promise will not be revoked. That an everlasting house is there. Now, I remember as a kid watching the uh, television series Dynasty and Dallas and talking about families, falls, and fortunes. And certainly the house of David has its failings 
as well as fortunes. But out of this house, out of the stump of Jesse, out of this place, a true son of the living God will come. And will be in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Gracious one, we thank you for your promises of families. We thank you for your presence in setting up a permanent residence among us. Help us to always find joy in your presence. Help us to always seek your house, your place, that we may worship you. Amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always.